In this video, we're going to have a quick look at the load line solution method. Load line is the particular word that electrical engineers use um, when they're simply solving um, a set of simultaneous equations. We all know how to solve simultaneous equations. We've done that plenty of times in maths. The difference here is that one or both of those equations can be nonlinear. So it's a graphical method for solving linear and nonlinear equations. We need this method and we want to understand how it works because all of the semiconductor devices that we're interested in, that's diodes, transistors, um, field effect transistors, um, you name it, uh, they're all nonlinear. Now, where possible, we linearize these nonlinear devices. And we do that by restricting the range of operation. Typically, we would restrict the range of amplitudes that can be applied to the devices. We might restrict the range of frequencies that get applied to the device. And uh, we come up with a, a mathematical approximation of this nonlinear behavior that looks linear over an appropriately small range. But we can't always completely avoid the nonlinearities. <clears throat> and so the great advantage of having um, modeling software like LT Spice is that it's very efficient for um, those programs to deal with the nonlinearities. But while we're trying to understand um, this material for the first time, we want to be able to do things with pen and paper. There's an added bonus too, and that is that load lines not only help us solve the nonlinear equations, but they provide a way for us to think about the action of the circuit and understand how it works. So let's have a look at the basic principle. Uh, on the left hand side here, we've got a simple series circuit consisting of a voltage source, a resistor, and some device which is potentially nonlinear. Um, the resistor here is usually just to stop uh, too much current flowing into the device, especially if we don't know um, how the device behaves. Now for a two terminal device like the one shown here, um, it will have a single terminal characteristic and that's usually supplied by the, the manufacturer. In this diagram on the right here, we've got the uh, current that flows through the circuit in particular the device and the voltage across the device and the blue curve here represents the behavior of the device as determined by somebody else. You can see that it's nonlinear. It looks a bit weird. And what we do is we're interested in finding something called the operating point. The operating point is the particular value of current and voltage that exists for the device when it's connected in series with the resistor to the voltage source Vs. Well, we know that um, Kirchhoff's voltage law applies, so we can in fact just write down an equation for this circuit. We know that the source voltage Vs is equal to I times R times the device voltage Vd. And it's no problem to rearrange this equation for I so we can write down I equals Vs over R minus Vd over R. Once we've been given Vs and R, we can draw this equation, right? Because it's simply a, a straight line. On the left-hand side, we've got I, which corresponds to the y-axis. On the right-hand side, we've got Vd, which corresponds to the x-axis. So for a particular value of Vs and R, I've been able to draw, draw that equation. Okay, the red line there. And this is what we call the load line. So Kirchhoff's voltage law, which applies to the circuit, has provided the red line. The device manufacturer has provided the device curve, and that's the blue line. It's pretty clear that if the device has um, a terminal characteristic given by this equation here, I equals some function of Vd, and the load line I is given by this simple linear equation, what we want is the solution to these uh, two equations, the simultaneous solution, because <clears throat> obviously the current is the same for both of them, and so we want to find out what that is. 
and it shouldn't be too hard to see that it must correspond to the point where these two things intersect. This is the only place where both curves have the same value of current and of course they'll have the same value of voltage. All right, so you've done this a million times in your maths courses, solving simultaneous equations. We're just doing it as it pertains to electronics and no different. So let's have a look at a couple of examples and um, see what's what. Here's a very simple example where instead of having some uh, clever and exotic component for our device, we've just got another resistor. Um, our job is to find the current and the voltage across the device. Now obviously this problem is trivial. We can just use Kirchhoff's voltage law again to, to do the calculation. But let's just solve this one using the load line method. So we can set up our um, equation for the circuit and we can um, deduce the equation for the load line, in this case 8 minus 8 VD in milliamps. We draw that line through there. Um, notice that we intersect over here at Vs, right, 10 volts, and we intersect on the current axis at 8, which happens to be uh, 10 over 1.25 k ohms. All right, we also can very easily figure out the device characteristic for the resistor, Rd. Um, Rd is equal to 0.5 kilo ohms, and so obviously the device characteristic is going to be um, I equals 2Vd. Why? Because the current is equal to Vd divided by Rd. Rd is 0.5, so 1 over 0.5 is 2. And obviously the solution to this set of simultaneous equations is given by this point here. And we've got two linear equations, and so it's trivial for us to find out exactly what it is. Okay, so that all makes perfect sense when we've got linear devices. What about when we don't have linear devices? Well, sometimes we can still calculate things exactly. For example, here I've got a square law device. Okay, my square law device is given by this equation, uh, this curve here. And we're told that the current is equal to 0.2 Vd squared when Vd is positive, and that's the bit that's drawn, and it's equal to 0 for Vd negative. Um, the load line, we figure it out again based on Vs and R, <coughs> put that in, and if we equate these two equations, then we only end up with a quadratic, which of course we can solve um, and figure out the operating point here. Okay, so again, the load line isn't really providing us with much because we've looked at um, devices for which there's a very simple equation that we can solve. But that's not always the case. And uh, usually when it comes to electronics, um, we end up with equations that we can't solve. Here's a much more practical example where we've got our uh, circuit again, but this time the device is a diode. And the diode equation for this particular diode is given by this expression here. So um, we've got the reverse saturation current, the thermal voltage, that's our equation. And this blue line here is the characteristic curve for the for the diode. When we put in our load line equation, it doesn't quite fit on this graph, but that's it there. And if we equate these two equations and try and solve for Vd, it simply can't be done. The only way to figure out what's going on is to either read off this operating point from the graph, or we can uh, use an iterative method to um, guess a solution and eventually home in on the solution there. Okay, so there's really not that much to the load line solution method. It's simply a graphical technique for finding the solution of a generally linear equation and a corresponding nonlinear equation. Later on when we're looking at transistors, um, we'll find another use for the load line. Uh, and that is to understand more deeply how the circuit operates.
That's it.